Hello, hello everyone. Happy Monday. I am back home here. I was away for the weekend at my parents' house and uh, got to see my parents and my brother. It was super fun. Uh, you might have seen my on-location uh, shoot on, on Friday there. <laughs> it was kind of fun. No frogs chirping yet, but they'll get chirping uh, towards the end of the summer. <laughs> So we have been working on the hour black, hourglass uh, blocks uh, for the hourglass block quilt that we're working on. Uh, however, you guys might have seen my post on the, the Penguin and Fish Crafters page. I made a uh, fun little block out of uh, an hourglass, an original hourglass block. Uh, I chopped it up and made a whole new block. Uh, with my mom just for fun. We were just playing around and uh, I thought I'd show you that tonight. So this is a way you can take your hourglass block. If you start and make a bigger hourglass block, this would be easier. Uh, and if you cut it up, it, you can turn it into something completely different. It was pretty fun. So we're going to make this kind of donut block with a little hourglass in the center like I did over over the weekend. So uh, if you saw that on the Penguin and Fish Crafters page, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you guys aren't on my Penguin and Fish Crafters page yet, I put the link in the description here and uh, you can check it out there and just uh, click join and I will let you in. So thanks again for coming. We are going to make that fun little donut block today. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. Uh, so I will be auctioning, not auctioning, <laughs> I will be giving away my uh, hourglass block when it's done. So if you haven't signed up for that yet, that, that link is also in the description here. So, all right, let's work on this hourglass block. Uh, let me know where you guys are coming in from tonight. I'm going to just quickly share this with the Penguin and Fish Crafters group in case there's anyone there who uh, isn't on this page and wants to see it. So just give me a moment. I will share it. And let me know how you guys' weekend went. I will, uh, I will read your, uh, I will read all your posts as they go by in just a sec here. Oh, Nancy, I'm glad you made it live. Okay, here we go. I am just sharing it quick here now, so thanks guys for bearing with me. Alabama. Okay, sharing a group. Okay, it is now shared. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate you hanging in there with me. So, all right, from, oh my gosh, I don't even know, if, uh, Rena, I don't know if I can pronounce that. Silicauga, Silicuga, Alabama, let me know if I got that right. Oh, Sherry from Florida. No problems tonight. Oh, great. Susan from Illinois. I see a lot of familiar faces. That's nice. Finish your solstice quilt. Oh, how exciting. Still working on a splendid sampler. Awesome! Oh, I just posted the front of my Splendid Sampler, so I don't know if you guys saw that in the Penguin and Fish page. I posted it over on the Splendid Sampler page as well. Uh, tomorrow, once I'm unpacked, I'm just not unpacked yet with, uh, with everything, but tomorrow I will uh, try and show you guys the, the back of the quilt. I sandwiched my uh, Splendid Sampler quilt together, so soon we'll get to be quilting here too. I'm excited to see how that goes. So, all right, guys, let's get going with this uh, new block. I am going to flip you guys around and we'll get going. All right, here we go. So, ooh, Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, that's close to, close to me. Oh, you saw the quilt, looks good. Oh, thanks, Rosaline. Oh, Irene, thanks so much. So, all right, guys, we are going to start out. I, I think we might be able to do all this tonight. But just in case, I mean, you know, it might take two nights. So I just thought this would be a fun little detour. So I've already cut a couple squares. So I'm doing this similar to what my mom and I did uh, yesterday when we were playing around with some fabric. The only difference is that I've cut two squares. I've cut two squares that are uh, contrasting in color. So a light and a dark. I mean, this is rather light, but compared to this, it's darker. 
and uh, I've cut them. I've cut them from two fat quarters. I've cut them 14 and a half inches. The difference that uh, between this and what my mom and I did is we took two pieces of fabric on the bolt still and cut only 14 inches, but all the way across the bolt. And then we cross cut it. So we actually ended up with three of each of these. Uh, tonight, I'm just going to do two from a fat quarter. And I'm doing it 14 and a half instead of uh, what we did uh, with um, 14 inches last night because I think I'm going to want a little more leeway for trimming my squares coming up. So we're going to try it with 14 and a half in instead tonight. But those are the measurements in case you wanted to give this a try. This will work with any, any hourglass block. So uh, it's just like a a fun thing we were playing around with. So I'm going to start out by making uh, making two hourglass blocks. So this will make four, but I'm going to make two and I'll make the other two later. So I'm going to do the same thing that we have been for the hourglass blocks by sewing all the way around the square. So let's get going on that right away. Just all the way around. Oh yes, so Debbie, this is my fabric. Um, I'm using this because it's similar to the fabric that my mom and I used. Uh, and then, you know, maybe uh, maybe she'll put these in the little mini baby quilt that she's making. This is uh, my fabric, it's uh, Safari Suite 2, and it is actually up on the site now. I put it up today. We had a, a little special sale for it uh, a few months ago, and uh, it hasn't been on the website, so just today is the first day uh, to get fat quarters of it uh, after that special little sale that we had. And um, this is the, the green version of what my mom and I used yesterday. Yesterday we used the red ones. So if you saw this over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, this is the same fabric, just the, the green colorway instead of the red colorway. Debbie. Yeah, and if you guys are interested in checking it out, the fat quarter bundles are on penguinandfish.com and then a backslash or forward slash, whatever the slash is, uh, fabric. And you can just get there by clicking the fabric tab as well. But I'm excited, just got those up today. So with the uh, this is actually, it was really kind of fun. My mom and I were just kind of tag teaming this. So she would sew and um, I would press. And then while I was pressing some of the blocks, she would go cut the other blocks and then I'd press those and she'd sew. So we were just going back and forth making these and it went super quick. I mean, we could have really almost, I mean, we started late in the evening and uh, we almost had all the, like, we almost had 12 of these blocks made in a short evening with us both kind of working on it. So that was kind of fun. <laughs> it's fun to really crank, crank out. Oh, I'm starting a beautiful tan. Oh man, Maureen, I don't know about that. I, I was outside a lot uh, this weekend, but holy man, it was warm. It was in the mid 90s uh, this weekend. And uh, I did get a little sunburn around my neck, and um, <laughs> that was unpleasant. <laughs> and you know, I used sunscreen and all that, but still managed to get a little bit burnt. All right, this is getting a little goofy at the end here, but it's going to be okay because we're going to trim it all out. All right, so we're sewn all the way around. Let's trim that up. First, uh, I will just press this, just to kind of get the seams feeling all uh, not so tight. Kind of setting, setting the seams a little bit. Ooh, and this is, so this is our two pieces sewn together all the way around the edge. Just, we're making it, we're doing this just how we made our hourglass blocks uh, for the past, uh, last week. 
and uh, we're just doing it a bit bigger is all. So I feel so weird using such big pieces though still at this after the splendid sampler because those are all just tiny pieces and ending up with uh, six and a half inch squares when we're done. So it, it's oh it's still awkward for me to be using such big pieces. Oh, your hand sewing and binding your splendid sampler quilt. Oh, Jennifer, that is so awesome. I'm just waiting to get to that stage. All right, guys, I'm going to tilt you so I think you can see a little bit more. Okay, so here's our square. Uh, we are going to cut the diagonals, and then we are going to cut halfway as well. So I'm going to start with the diagonals, and then halfway on this is going to be seven and a quarter inches. So that's that's my plan right now. I got, had to get the, yep, that one's not big enough. Um, I had to get the big 24 inch ruler out. So I'm gonna start, you know what? I think I'm gonna line it up on my ruler and I'm gonna, or on my cutting mat and I'm gonna use this as a guide and just kind of wing it. I, I, I'm, instead of me measuring precisely the halfway points, I think I can just count the seven and a half so we're fine. So diagonal to di diagonal, we'll start there. All right, here we go. Oh, you usually machine sew. Oh, must have had a man moment. You're going through hand through the hole. Splendid sampler binding. Well, I'll be with with you with that. I am. I'll I'll stitch it on with the machine. You know, on the front. I think it's. I think it's called a French fold way of doing the binding, something like that. Uh, but I will uh, be hand stitching it on to the back once I have that done. I'm so happy though that I, I made the binding already for it because that's one less stuff that we have to do. All right, here's my two diagonals. So at this point, I have four half, four like really big half square triangles. See, so there we go. Magic half square triangles. We've got four of those, but we are not doing half square triangles. We are doing an hourglass. So let's do our last cut. And it's at halfway point, which is the seven and a quarter. So I'm just gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a quarter. And you know, we do have that X in the middle to help us out. I'm gonna just get as close as I can. About there will do. So this would be nice on a rotating cutting mat. You know what? Maybe I'll actually. No, you know what? I think I can still get it. So let's do this seven and a quarter this way. I'm guessing it's right there. All right, again, two diagonals and then both horizontals. Ooh, not a good cutting direction, but I think we got it. So, all right, now we have our pile of pieces. So this should make, this should make um, four hourglass blocks. We are only going to do two right now because for this little donut uh, that we're going to be making, we need we need two hourglass blocks to make two donuts. So first of all, I need two of these uh, where the uh, green and the white are on the same side. So these are not; these are opposites. I need them the same to make an hourglass. All right, so those two are the same. That could be my first hourglass. And here's one. Oh, and here's this one that we already have. So that's my second hourglass. I can actually make two more. So I'll save these. But tonight, I'm just going to try and do these two. So first, let's press these. I'm going to press them to the dark side, all four of these. We'll do them all four right away. I don't think we could maybe finish all this tonight. Uh, 
it might be tight. We might might have to squeeze in the end of it tomorrow, but uh, I think this is going to be fun. We'll at least have an hourglass blocks, uh, hourglass blocks made tonight, but I think we'll actually get pretty far on the rest of this, the donut black. It's a cute little donut with a little hourglass in the center. All right, there's the first two. And these guys, we will press to the dark as well. The dark isn't really all that dark, is it? Uh, but in contrast to the bright white fabric, it does appear darker. So it's a subtle darker uh, fabric, but in this case, it's our dark. In any other case, it might be the light, but between these two fabrics, it is the dark. All relative to the colors that are surrounding it. Whether something's light or dark. Uh, this is, Nancy, I'm not going to um, have this be part of the hourglass quilt. This is just some, this is just kind of a fun little idea that came up because we've been working on the hourglass block or the hourglass uh, quilt. And a few guys, a few people asked me. Uh, I, I put pictures of this when my mom and I were working on a version uh, when I was at her house this weekend, and I thought, you know what, this might be fun to show you guys in real time uh, how we how we did this. So, all right, I have my two hourglasses. I am going to sew them together. So, since we've pressed them both to the dark sides, we'll be able to nest our seams. So, I'm just going to grab that seam like that, line up the edges, and sew. You know, in theory, it'd probably be good for me to clip that, but meh. <laughs> I like when I can just uh, sew. And again, you know, if I'm close enough for this, that's good enough. But if you really want a nice point, that's why we're nesting the seams. If you really want a nice point, then, you know, feel free to put a pin there or a wonder clip. But I'm going to just hold it there with my fingers while I line up the rest of this. And we are gonna trim these to nine inches, so uh, don't worry if it's not perfect. We'll be trimming, trimming the edges. You could make, Nancy, you could make one of these for your hourglass uh, quilt if you wanted to, it'd be pretty fun. Hello from Michigan! Oh, <laughs> thanks! Thanks, Patricia! My little kitty tattoo. Uh, oh, so the stray cat that uh, lives at uh, outside by my parents, uh, the stray cat that's kind of stuck around, so we're making it official in the sense of uh, he got a name this weekend. <laughs> So this cat was super duper shy, but it would meow a, a ton, and you could just yell out kitty out into the ether and it will start meowing so that you can know where he is and he'll come, he'll come then. Uh, so for a while we were calling him Chatty Caddy, and so now his official name is Chad. <laughs> from being called Chatty Caddy. Uh, that's where it came from, so. <laughs> My parents officially have a cat, even though it's still like an outside uh, feral cat, but it's so nice. It, it's, it's basically, you know, a domesticated cat. We think it might have, you know, we think someone might have gotten rid of it and because uh, it was pretty scared, but it's clearly likes humans and wants to be pet and held and all that. And he just, he lives outside in the wood pile and hunts mice. And if you call for him, he'll, he'll start meowing and talking, talking with you. And then he'll come and just want to be pet <laughs> all day. So yeah, he is officially Chad, <laughs> which is just the silliest cat name, but I love it. All right, we have our hourglasses. Let's, let's uh, trim them up. But my my uh, my cat tattoo here almost looks like him. He's he's a gray uh, tiger kitty, uh, but he has a little bit of um, a little bit of tan undertone in some of some of that gray. 
All right, I'm going to do that thing where we where we rotate that center. Uh, it's kind of fun. So first, it just makes the uh, seam allowance uh, lay a little flatter. So I'm going to press it first, just to any side, just to get it started. Oh, there, look, we can start to see the... I mean, I definitely did not... Uh, I should have maybe pinned them because I'm definitely not uh, centered there. That's not a great point on this one, but oh well. So all right, after you've pressed it, then flip it over, and you're just going to pull apart that seam in the center. So pulling it apart, that mine's a little funny because I did not get that seam perfect, but then I'm going to repress this side so it's flat this way. And the result is that all the seams are pressed kind of like in a circle. And then you have this cute little uh, little kind of pinwheel or little uh, four patch really in the center here. I'll show you up close. It's kind of wonky on this one, but they're kind of like that. And it, so the whole that whole middle seam will uh, lay flatter overall. So I'm going to just give the front one more press. And this is our first hourglass block. We will trim this up, but first let's let's press that second one. So there we go. First one, cute little delicate little green and uh, and white. I think they're kind of fun. This would be a, like a sweet little baby quilt with with these fabrics. My uh, the fabrics I'm using for um, for my hourglass quilts, I don't know, they're not as baby as this, so it's kind of, I think these hourglasses would be cute baby. Um, the cat tattoo isn't necessarily a memory. I mean, it's kind of like our first cat, Kitty, but not quite. We had a cat named Kitty and, and then another one named Catty. They were little tiger kitties like this. It's more just... I don't know. I love cats so much, and I don't have any, I kind of don't, um, you know, we make a lot of stuff all the time, and I don't really want animals inside and around all, all the stuff, so it's my, it's my kitty in lieu of having a real kitty. <laughs> but I, I fetch a little kitty cats whenever I can see them, and I, I like counting the cats when I see them in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm a weird cat person, and I don't even have any cats. Oh, your cat's called Kit Kat. That's nice. Oh, Jennifer, I am just, I'm not making anything, really. I'm just, for fun, just showing you guys those blocks that uh, I made at my parents' house. Um, that little, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm starting with my hourglass block, and it's going to turn, like, magically turn into those donuts those donut blocks with the um, little uh, um, hourglass in the middle. So, all right, next I need to square it up. I'm gonna square this up to nine inches. Uh, so, yep, so we will, we will trim a little bit. So the trick is, again, with an hourglass block, you do need to mark your center. Like, the center is so much better. That is what I call a perfect point. Oh, Oreo. Such a, oh, Kit Kat and Oreo. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Both of you have good candy names for, for your kitties. So, all right, I need to mark the center of the nine and a half, which is the four and a half. Um, since I'm only going to do two, I'm going to just, I'm not going to mark it. Usually I would mark it with a piece of tape, kind of like how I have on the outer edges here. But uh, right now I'm just going to go four and a half. And, oh, weird, this is, um. There's no numbers on this side, so four and a half. And I'm guessing it's right here. One, two, three, four and a half. So at this point right there, I need to match up. Oh, this has all sorts of points in it already. That's nice. And then making sure I have the diagonal going well. And I do there. So, okay, that's my first cut. Again, this would be fabulous on a rotating cutting mat. Uh, that's how I did all my smaller blocks were on the rotating cut, um, cutting mat. And you know what? I just thought I could stack these, but you know what? I already have this place. Oops, wow. I don't, that's really funny. I don't have my little nice true grips on here. And it, 
that was really noticeable uh, just then. So True Grips are those little rubber stickers. I've talked about those, the little rubber stickers. There we go. You can you can see one there. Uh, True Grips are what they're called, and I've put them under all my rulers. I barely ever use this ruler though, so I didn't put one here, and right away my hand just slid off. So I gotta make sure I'm more careful. All right, let's rotate this around and get that other uh, side. So again, I think this is my four and a half. Yep. And now we will get this to nine inches. And at this point, uh, we have what uh, the size the size block that I had that I was working with at my at my mom's house, my mom and dad's house, when we were working on the this donut block. Okay, so I need to do this one more time because for the donut blocks we need to, you don't need, to, well yeah actually you do kind of need to because we are, we are making two kind of opposite colored blocks and I'll show you what I mean in a sec here. We are getting to that point real soon here. Okay, four and a half, four and a half, four and a half, okay. So we don't have much of an edge on this one. So good thing we started with the, the larger 14 and a half uh, square instead of, maybe not that very straight, but oh well, uh, the 14 and a half squares instead of the 14, which is what my mom and I used. Okay, flip it around. Multi-poos, fun. I do like me some dogs too, uh, but I don't know. I really like cats a lot. <laughs> we had dogs growing up too. All right, checking at four and a half mark again in my diagonals, and we should be eh, decent enough right here. This is what we're gonna do. Okay, now we are going to have two nine and a half, or not nine and a half, we're going to have two nine inch blocks. So what I'm going to do now, and, the, and it's really kind of awesome that they ended up nine inches, because what we're going to do now, it seems kind of crazy, but we are going to cut it in thirds both ways. So <laughs> it's more of like this weird, crazy magic cutting, which I think is just so fun. So we are gonna cut it in thirds. So three inches, you know, it makes the nine. So we're gonna cut three inches, you know, another three inches, and then three inches and three inches this way. So you know what? I'm gonna just do this uh, real simple. Well, this is a three inch ruler. Why don't we just use this? I will um, line that up on my edge. And get my second ruler here. And you know what? To make this go even faster, I'm going to throw this guy on top of it. We'll just do both at once. So let's just line this up really well. It doesn't matter that it's rotated. Well, but let's just keep it the same for now. So I have both my greens here and both my whites here. Really line this up the best you can. I mean, if it's not perfect, it's not perfect. But what we're going for is two, uh, three inch, three inch, three inch, three inch. All right, rulers. I'm tempted to just use the lines as a guide, but um, I don't know. Mom always said those weren't always accurate. <laughs> I do like using them though. Let's just use, we'll use this ruler on this side and then we'll use it on the other side and, and that will be our good three inches. So I'm lining up my three inch ruler with the edge. Getting a second ruler, lining that up. Okay, now I'm cutting through both of my hourglasses. Katorchi, <laughs> it's a cute name for a cat. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. All right, there. Now remember, we're, we want to leave it all in place, so let's not move anything yet. 
And I'm going to do my three inches from this side. And you know, if you're not, if you don't end up with a nine inch block, you're just going to have to do the math. So we're doing it in thirds. So, you know, if you're doing it a, an eight inch block or whatever, all you have to do is divide that by three and try and get the little fraction to, to work out with you. And you know, I'm sure if you're close, that's going to be okay. But yeah, you're cutting it in thirds. So that's why it's so nice that it, it turned out to be a nine inch square. And again, to get this nine inch square, we started out with a 14 and a half. Oh, I love that you speak of your mom. Oh, oh thanks, Patricia. I appreciate that. I sure do cherish it, <laughs> for sure. All right, we're doing the three inches. You know what? I think I'm going to line up the other ruler with this because this is going to be a pretty difficult to cut. Another thing that would be good with a... Um, a rotating cutting mat, but I don't have one this big, and you know what? It's got to go on my list. I need a bigger. I, I love my seven inch one for smaller blocks, like, totally love it. It's perfect for travel, but man, one of those 12 inch ones that could fit this would be nice. Okay, so we have cut both of our hourglass blocks into thirds. So thirds and thirds. So I'm going to just, uh, lay them both out so you can see both of them and then here's where the magic comes in but let's let's just lay them out exactly how they are right next to each other so we can see the progress okay a few more pieces You get some of these funny little uh, triangles. You might have to cut them off here and there, like these little guys, but it'll be okay. So, all right, here are the two hourglass blocks that we did, right? So now here's the fun part. What we're gonna do is, first of all, we're gonna exchange. You should have you should have four solid squares out of this now, right? I have two uh, uh, two green squares, two of the dark squares, and two of the light squares. I want to put all of the lights over here and all of the darks over here. So let's just exchange, you know, here's a dark, let's exchange it for one of these light ones. And here's a light one, let's exchange it for this other dark. All right, so that, that's kind of a neat block. But now what we're going to do is we are going to point the color of the blocks that we have. So this one we put, put the dark ones, so the greens. I'm going to point all the green corners to the inside. So I'm just going to rotate all those green corners to the inside. And on this one, we did all the white. So on this one, I'm going to point all the white corners. Oops, this one's kind of connected. All the white corners to the inside. And there you go, do you guys see them? So now we have our two donuts with the hourglass in the middle. So we needed the two because we exchanged the lights for the darks. But there, now all we have to do is sew together the uh, nine patches. I don't know, let me, let, let me know if you guys can see this. So we have the donut shape with the little hourglass on the inside and another donut shape that's just the flipped version of this with the hourglass. Um, with the hourglass on the inside. A light version and then we got a dark version. So we did need the two hourglass blocks to make both. Uh, so, all right, so now uh, let's just sew these together. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to sew these two. I'm gonna kind of chain do it to do it really quick. So I'm gonna do these two, then these two, then these two. Then I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do both blocks at once just for speed. Uh, so this is where you have to kind of keep track of what you're sewing. But I'm going to do, then after after this row, I'm going to do this, this column here. So these two, then these two, then these two. Then I will go back and sew this one, to, and this one, and this one. So at that point, we'll have the three strips. Same deal over here. Then we'll press them and then sew our strips together. So that is kind of, that is our process for uh, the sewing. 
but I always, I always like, I only, I only, only go as far as uh, what I can keep track of. So you can just sew all just one block at the same time. But for speed's sake, I'm gonna do both at once. So again, you might find a few little hanging chads on there yet, because we did cut into a seam. You can just snip those off as you go. But all right, these are my first two. Oh, it would be such a cute quilt. I mean, we just, uh, we just kind of randomly tried this out. We were actually, uh, my mom and I were actually trying to do a different block. We were trying to do a disappearing hourglass block. Uh, but <laughs> in my head, you start out that with an hourglass, but you actually don't. It was kind of a trick. So we messed up right at the beginning and um, ended up with this block instead, which I think is really cute. And uh, mom's making a whole baby quilt out of it. So we started sewing it uh, last night and there's only a couple blocks left. It went so fast. And I mean, you can see here, I mean, we're gonna probably finish these two pretty good sized blocks. They'll be, I think they'll end up about eight inches, but we'll finish these eight inch blocks in an evening, two, two of them. And we actually have, uh, remember we have, we have the leftover triangles too. So we can actually make four of these up from that one pair of pair of blocks that we started out with. A pair of squares. All right, I forgot what's what here. All right, yep, that's correct. So now I'm doing that first column, well, the first two columns in the, um, in that second block now. I'm gonna just leave this hanging chad there. Get under there. All right, this is my last one from the, I know, hanging chads, what a memory, I know, right? Sheesh. This one, this one I'm gonna have to trim off. So I might actually, uh, once we finish our hourglass quilt, I might try an actual disappearing hourglass. I, I totally know what I did wrong uh, and why we ended up with these blocks instead. Uh, so it'd be fun to go back and try making one of those too at the end, but I'll, I'll wait till we're done with our actual quilt. This will be the only detour, I think. So, all right, we are trimming those. I'm putting them back in place just so you guys can see and so we don't get completely lost in this whole thing. You want to make sure you're sewing the right things to the right things. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it off one at a time because I know I sewed them in order. So if I cut them off at one at a time, then I will put them back in the right order. And I will cut the first two off here because the other one's still on the machine. But just placing those on my, my second piece. No, I cut this little guy off. All right, let's sew these last, uh, last columns on. And uh, then we'll be ready to press these and uh, sew them up super fast. I am totally digging these fast, fast quilts, fast blocks. It's so satisfying. Sometimes you just need to sew something and get it done fast with minimal thinking, you know? All right, here's that last one from, from the block over here. I'm just gonna put it in place. All right, let's finish them up. So again, because of the way that we started this with that sewing all the way around in a square, uh, we are at this point sewing on the bias, which means that 45 degree angle of fabric that is very stretchy compared to the horizontal and vertical uh, parts of the fabric. So uh, you just have to be aware of stretching, but luckily, you know, with little blocks like this, 
It's not too bad. Oh, you really like these? Oh, that's cool. Oh, the colors remind you of ice cream. Oh my gosh, this is totally, this is like pistachio ice cream. A light pistachio ice cream. Oh dang, that sounds so good. That sounds like a summery, summery treat. Or lime. This is, um, ooh, it could be mint. Ooh, like mint chocolate chip. That was one of my favorites. Uh, so this one would be mint chocolate chip. This would be like mint with jimmies or something. This green is kind of a little rainbow chippy. All right, here's our last one. I'm gonna put an ender on this too, and we will trim and press these all at once. But it's so fast, that's it for these two blocks. All we have to do is sew together the rows. Ha, <laughs> now you want ice cream. But man, I, I, I really like, I would have never thought of pistachio ice cream being a thing when I was little, but dang, now that stuff's good. Just a little bit of that roasty nut taste in there. All right, I'm gonna just trim all these. I am not worrying too much anymore about messing them up, or like messing up the order, because I don't actually, there's only six pieces, and it'll be pretty clear where they go when we're, when we're done here. But all right, there's our six little rows to make our two blocks. Let's do our little pressing of those. All right, so I am pressing on the the ones that are the top and the bottom so this is the top and the bottom of the donut versus here's the center the center one has that uh the hourglass in uh for the top and the bottom pieces i'm pressing it inwards towards that uh just plain square so i'm gonna just give that a little press inward i think my machine might have to wake up a little bit Ooh, not my machine my iron speaking of summer Oh, I know you haven't seen me without wearing a sweater. I know. Oh, God. It was so cold for so long, and then all of a sudden, bam, 90 degrees. <laughs> oh, it's kind of crazy. All right, so here is our first one. I think I'll just press it on the front a little bit, too. Okay. Uh, and on the ones with the, with the hourglass in the center, those I'm going to press press the seams out to the outer squares. And to do that, I'm just gonna lay it on the front and kind of squish it over this way, and then squish it over this way. I think that'll do. Just do it real quick. So that, there we go. So now these seams, I can flatten that a little bit maybe. Now these seams are going outward, whereas the top and bottom piece will go inward. So that's gonna allow us to nest the seams together. So let's get through these other ones real quick. We're gonna go a hair late tonight, guys. Just a few minutes, because I think we can finish these tonight yet. We only have like four more seams to, to sew after we're done pressing this, and then we're done. So I think we can do it. All right, now here's the white block again, towards the center for for that top and bottom of the donut. Oh, I got cold by you there again. Oh man, you had to turn on the furnace. Oh, goodness. That's, that's too much. Too much for me, for my brain to deal with. <laughs> Turning the heat on again. It's seriously though, it went from like 50 degrees to 90 degrees so quickly. And all week this week it's gonna be like 90s, but I think we're gonna get rain. We had some pretty powerful storms uh, while we were gone, and a few neighbors uh, had some trees come down and stuff, so it was pretty intense, I guess. So I'm glad I'm glad none of our trees went down when we were when we were gone. All right, there we are. Now all we have to do is plop these guys back together. So here is the white one, and this bottom guy, we just gotta rotate it like that, and I'll get the other dark one put together over here, and we're ready to sew. Okay, so at this point, we should be able to nest our seams, because we put the middle ones out and the top and bottom inward. So all I'm gonna do is nest those seams together again 
and sew along that edge. I will do both top pieces, so I, uh, I'll do, I'll sew this one together, these two together, and then I'll sew these two together. I'll trim them off, and then before I press, I'll sew the bottoms on both, and then they'll be done. We'll just press them all, and uh, that will be that. We'll have two cute little blocks done for no reason whatsoever other, other than it's kind of fun. <laughs> I might actually, um, I might actually send them to my mom because uh, she's making, you know, we, this was that little experiment we did uh, just with uh, some fabric. And I'm using fabric from the same collection and I'm making them the same size as what she already has. Uh, so if she needed, if she needs two extra blocks, then she can have these. Uh, it's supposed to be 104 by you. Oh my god. Oh, that makes my brain hurt, too. <laughs> Everything makes my brain hurt, apparently. Weather-wise, not today. Or oh, I stretch this a little bit. I think we'll be good still, though. Again, we are on the bias, so you gotta be careful not to stretch too much. I think it'll be okay once we press, though. All right, next to... This is that second block now. I'm trading back off, back and forth. So you could actually line up all your blocks and do all the parts all at once, but for me, I would get confused and lose track of where I'm at. So I'm, I'm doing them by twos. Or, you know, tonight I'm only doing two, but uh, when I was working on it with my mom, I was sewing by twos. So I'd have the two uh, opposite blocks next to each other. And really what I should have done here is sewn on the opposite side and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. I'll, I'll do it that way next. And I'll, I'll tell you why. So, okay. I'm gonna snip this. This is, I think, my white block. Okay, yeah, my white block. So what I should have done is I sewed on, on this side. What I should have saw, done was flipped it over and sewed on this side instead because, uh, and I'll do that now, so I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to put these two together, but instead of sewing on this side uh, where this one, this guy's on top, I'm going to sew with this one where I can see the center because then as I sew, I can aim for these little cross bits here. You know, right here is a good example. Uh, here was a cross fit and I sewed right over it. We're gonna sew, try to sew our seam right over where those meet. And what that will do, uh, and I didn't do such a good job up here, so I'll show you the difference. Uh, right here, since where, this is where I did sew over the seam, look, this meets at the exact right spot. My, um, my seams match up and this point matches up. Over here, where I was off, my point doesn't match up. See, I have all this space here. In my case, you know, I don't much care, but if you want to go for exactness, let's match this up again, yep, you'll want to sew perhaps with this on top. So let's give that a go, and then there's one more seam after this, and we'll press it and be done. I don't know, two big old blocks. In, uh, in an hour from scratch, that's not too shabby, I don't think. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I aim for... I got thinking about other stuff, and I still don't know if I aim for that center point, but let's do it now. So now I'm aiming for where those two lines crisscross. Please show us the finished quilt depth. Oh, for sure! I know you're making a baby quilt uh, with your mom. Oh, yeah, so it's not done yet. I mean, this was um, this was totally an experiment that we were just playing around with. And so she's gonna turn these blocks. We just wanted to try the blocks. She's gonna turn the blocks into a baby quilt. And uh, uh, it's not done yet, but when she's done, I'll for sure get a photo of it. There are some photos of the progress in, uh, in uh, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. And I will, uh, I, had, I have one more photo. We are trying to decide uh, we're going to trade, 
I'll, we're going to offset the blocks, and I'll, I'll kind of show you that. Uh, and uh, I, I took a photo of that, so I will post that in, uh, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group uh, tomorrow. So you can kind of see what it might look like, but it's not done, and it's totally an experiment. All right, so now I'm aiming for that crisscross again. I have my seams nested, and I'm going to try and go right over that point. And now I'm going to line up the next seam. So I'm getting that, I'm, I'm uh, nesting that seam, putting those folds right on, right next to each other, so they butt up against each other. And then again, I'm going to try and aim for that seam, that cross. All right, and then. Gonna line up the rest, and this will be it. Two fun little weird blocks that you can make out of your hourglass block. So you know, we I'm doing this just for fun uh, because we are working on the hourglass block quilt, and it's just neat. I think that you can make all these other things out of it. So I think we can just press press to one side this time. Actually, I think I kind of want to press out from that center one because that center one's so clogged with seams, I suppose. So I'm going to press press it out still. I mean, here's where you could, if you like pressing your seams open, you can do that. But, you know, I'm just, just pressing. Doesn't matter so much, I don't think, what, what direction you go. All right, so here's our white block. Do, 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 do. And our, uh, let's press this one out to our little green block. I know, I'm not probably pressing this in the best way, but it's getting done. Flip that over. Press on front. Alright, I think that's good enough for now. Okay, so there is two cute little blocks. And I think uh, if you I think they'll end up around eight inches. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm measuring it on my, my board. It's like exactly eight inches. So sewn in a, sewn in a um, quilt, they'd end up being seven and a half inches, which is maybe a little weird, but uh, there they are. And so next to each other, they'll also in the corners make this cute hourglass as well. So you can see here's, here's half of an hourglass. You know, you can look at it, if you look at it this way, you'll get half of the hourglass. This, these would actually be very cute on point. Um, on point meaning, um, rotated, the whole quilt rotated 45 degrees. But there you go. So uh, with that 14 inch block, you know, I have enough here to make two more of these. So uh, we'll have a nice, you know, we'll end up with like a 14 inch block from those two 14 inch, inch blocks. So you kind of <laughs> uh, reduce the fabric by half, which is kind of a silly thing to think about. But there we go, two little opposite guys. So I thought that'd be fun. You know, another another silly thing you can do with uh, just cutting, cutting in fun ways with, with the hourglass block. Uh, just so neat. Just cut it in thirds and you get this other whole crazy different design. I think that's kind of neat. So anyway, that is that for tonight. Thanks so much for uh, hanging out with me. I hope this kind of opens the brain a little bit to some more options of what you can do with those hourglass blocks. Um, I would, I'll eventually make the other two up and I don't know, which we should uh, figure out. Um, maybe on, on the, uh, let me switch you guys around quick and we'll, we'll chat. But I'm wondering, I'm wondering what to make out of these now. <laughs> I'll end up with, with four blocks. So you know what? I might just send them to my mom because uh, she will have, three blocks by four blocks, and maybe she'll want four more, and then she can do a four by four uh, quilt instead with a couple little uh, green ones to go with her red ones. So I think I'll do that, but I'll make, 
I'll make I'll make the other two at some point. So here we go. We got uh, white and green, cute little opposites. Oh, and you can rotate them too. So now that center is going the opposite direction. Oops, I dropped it. In the, I picked it up in the wrong direction. But there. So now the greens, these greens are on the left and right, and here they're on the top and bottom. So when you're putting it in a quilt, you can kind of rearrange those center hourglasses how, how you'd like them to go. But that is that. Uh, um, you know, if I don't decide to send it to my mom, uh, if you have a, a different idea of what we could make with four blocks this size, uh, let me know in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Uh, I will post this video there when I'm done, and I will take some photos of these as well. But uh, thanks for joining me for this little detour. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but it's so fun to learn and try new things, and this goes along with the hourglass, some other neat things you can do with it. But tomorrow night we will be back on the hourglass quilt. I have all my blocks ready to go. We just need to figure out what we want to do with it. Do we want to offset them? Do we want to mash them all together? Uh, do we want to try and create designs like little pinwheels or squares in it? Uh, how are we going to use up the rest of our fabric from the fat quarters? Uh, there's a whole lot of fun little uh, decisions we can um, make. <laughs> so that's the job of tomorrow. So, okay guys, thanks again for coming in tonight. I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and I will see you tomorrow night at 9.30 p.m. Central. Have a great evening. Good night.